let's take a look at the project navigator with the files in it. And now I'm going to open the utilities area on the other side. Notice how as I do this, I'm shrinking the amount of space in the editor area. But there are times when you want to see two areas, the navigator and the utilities area. And so in that case, then you just open them both. Most of us, when we work with Xcode, constantly switch back and forth about what is going to be open and what is going to be closed. But what I'm going to demonstrate now requires both the project navigator and this part of the utilities area, which is the library. The library contains a number of objects that you can use in your project. And the first one here is file templates. This is a bar such as the tab bar up here at the top of the project navigator that lets you choose from various options down here. In this case, it's the various items in the library. You'll notice down here I have a number of files. Let's say I want to create a new Objective-C class. This object, I can click on it once to get more information about it, and I can drag it over here and decide where I want to put it. I can save it, give it a name that I want. And now here it is over here. Notice I got two for the price of one. Because an Objective-C class, and we'll get into this as we go on, has two files, a header file and an implementation file. So if I look at the implementation file, you can see I've got here the implementation. Here is the header file. And notice that I've got some code that has already been created for me. I've got up here a timestamp and information about the user. In this case, it's infinite skills. So I can just pull it out of the library and put it over here. Now, if I want to use the shortcut menu, I'm holding down control. At this point, I've selected those two files. I can delete them. I can leave them on disk and just remove the references from the project navigator, or I can move them to the trash, which is what I want to do in this case. I'm not going to use them. I was just showing you how you can drag those objects. Now let's look at the next section of the library. These are code snippets. I don't need the navigator to be shown because the code snippets go into the currently open file. So let's say I want something that I always have to check. Here's a for statement. If you work in a number of programming languages, you may have the syntax of various for statements in your mind, and you may not be able to remember exactly what you want. So here, notice that I'm dragging it into the file, and notice that the insertion point shows different places. I see the plus sign there, and I've got that for statement over here. Now, I have an error because I put it in between two methods, but that doesn't matter. I've got these placeholders here, and I can type in the code. What is the condition for the for statement? And I can increment it and then put the statements inside the loop down here, replace the placeholder with that. Notice that I have the brackets already set up for me. So these are code snippets, exactly what the title says that you can put into your file. It gives you the basic syntax. You just fill in the blanks. Now, the third tab up here lets me put objects into Interface Builder. Working with the interface, you'll see that this is how I put buttons and other objects into the interface. I drag them from here. And the final tab is the media library. And this is where you can store graphics and so forth that you may want to use in your app. So here you have the library in the utilities area, and I can reduce it so it's now not shown at all. The other part of the utilities area, other than the library, is for inspectors.